guys, so today's video is going to be a foundation review slash first impressions. And I know, I know, I know. I'm always like, oh, I hate first impressions. I'd rather give you guys a review since my mind changes so often and I feel like I have to use a product like three or four times before I can really tell you if I love it or not. Sometimes first impressions, not the best for me. But I am telling you guys, when this foundation came out, I got so many DMs, comments, and tweets asking me to do a first impressions on it. Not even a review. Well, actually, a lot of you guys asked me for a review. But several of you guys told me to try it out for the first time on camera with you since I have very dry skin and this is more of a matte foundation. I haven't even told you what this is. By the way, I have Invisalign on. I couldn't take them out today. Bear with me. This is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation. I used to use Juvia's Place all the time on my channel like about a year ago. I was really, really into their eyeshadows, their eyeshadow palettes. They're still really amazing. I really like Juvia's Place a lot. So when I saw that they came out with this foundation, I knew I had to pick it up. It was really difficult for me to pick my shade online since it is online. I picked up like four shades and this is the one that matches me the most. So this is what we're going with. I am in the shade Fest 620, I think. I hope. And this foundation comes in this really freaking cute, like peachy tube packaging. You get one fluid ounce and it retails for $20, which is pretty good for a foundation. I know that Juvia's Place is a more affordable brand, but I think $20 for a foundation is pretty good. This also comes in 42 shades and they have a really good shade, shade selection. Damn Invisalign. At least that's what I gather on the website. The pictures that they put up, they have a pretty big shade selection and it ranges from like really light to very deep, which I like. It's also supposed to be a very long lasting formula, which we're gonna test today because I'm gonna be wearing it all day. What time is it? It is currently 12.20 p.m. I wanted to start this a little bit earlier, but it is me. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I have a feeling I'm not gonna like this foundation just simply because my skin is so dry. But I am curious to see how it wears on someone with dry skin because I do have several matte foundations that I like. As long as I work with them, I can wear them. So we'll see if this becomes one of those foundations. I'm gonna pick up my hair, I'm gonna do a little poquito pelo. Does anybody else call it that? Like this hairstyle? I call it poquito pelo. And everybody makes fun of me, but I've called it that like my entire life since I was a little kid. Like even Amanda, my friend who does my hair for like all my events, she doesn't speak Spanish or anything, but she'll be like, poquito pelo? Is that what you want? She knows I love that poquito pelo, do. Only when she does it, I look a lot cuter than this. Okay, so you know the drill. I'm gonna do this side with a damn sponge. This is my Flower Beauty sponge. And then I'm gonna do this side with my It Cosmetics Love Is The Foundation brush. This is my favorite foundation brush of all time. And whenever I'm gonna try out a new foundation, I like to use a primer that I always use, a primer I can count on, just so I can give this foundation its best chance. So I'm gonna be going in with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is the best if you have dry skin because it just hydrates the crap out of your face. And I always use this whenever I'm gonna go in with a really matte foundation because it just leaves your skin with a really nice slip. But not like a slidey slip. That was a weird word to choose. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna pump some on the back. I love that this is in a squeezy tube, by the way. I always talk about how foundations in a squeezy tube are my favorite. I mean, sure, it's not the most fanciest packaging, but look how convenient it is to just squeeze your foundation out of a tube. I mean, I even prefer this way more than a pump. So, as you can see, it's a pretty thick foundation. It's not like liquidy <laughs> at all. It's just like hanging out there. Not really moving. Nice little take little pump. And obviously I'm gonna start off with very little product and then I'll just build. This has like a very moussey consistency. Oh boy. I feel like a little goes a super long way anyway. You're not gonna need a lot. Oh, this also has very full coverage or claims to have very full coverage. I feel like this color is good. Wow, look at me. I mean, I had to buy four shades. So I guess I'm not that good, but still I got one right. The others were way, way too light for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and go over the nose and stuff with the sponge, even though it's technically like right in the middle. Wow, I feel like a little goes a really long way. You saw the pump I applied to the back of my hand. It was very small and I still have a bunch of foundation on the back of my hand and my entire face is completely covered on this side. This is full coverage for sure. And you know what? I'm looking at the finish and I don't know if it's because I applied it with a beauty blender. I'm or a beauty sponge. I always call every sponge a damn beauty blender, but you know what I mean. I know using a damp sponge shears out the foundation a little bit and it makes it a bit more natural looking, but this doesn't look too dry at all. It's matte, but it's not like flat. Zoom you in so you can see the foundation on this side of my face versus this side. 
Okay, I really don't want to use the brush on this side. I just get the feeling that this foundation applies better with a sponge. But we're gonna do it anyway. I wanna see how it covers my little pimpy here. This color is slightly more orange than my natural skin color, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm still using the foundation I pumped on the back of my hand. I thought I smelled farts for a second, but no, actually this foundation doesn't have a scent at all. I'm pretty sure Cordelia just farted. Okay, so this is the foundation on my face. And actually, it doesn't look that different on this side of my face than this side. The only thing is that I feel like my pores are bigger on this side of my face. Like, they look larger on this side. On this side, it looks more pressed into the skin. And on this side, it looks like it's sitting on the skin just a little bit. But it's not anything crazy. I was really expecting this foundation to look a lot more matte, a lot more dry and cakey. But it doesn't. And it has no tackiness whatsoever. I mean like barely there, but I'm pretty sure that was the um, primer I put down. I think it looks really good. Even around my nose. I mean, it looks foundation-y around my nose just a little, but it's nothing too crazy. I am gonna take my sponge though, and I'm just gonna work it on this side just to really press this foundation into my skin. And in fact, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the back of my hand, just a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna build this up over my pimple and just to see how it builds gonna add a little bit with my finger over this guy boom okay so this is one last look at my foundation before I go in with concealer bronzer and the whole shebang and you know what so far I think I really like it does it look heavier than other foundations I'm used to yes I'm more of a medium coverage kind of girl and this is definitely a full coverage foundation but considering its claims it doesn't look bad on my dry skin at all I mean at least not yet I think using a brush doesn't really buff it into the skin as well as a beauty blender like the beauty blender just pushes it right into your skin and the brush doesn't do that so I definitely prefer a damp sponge with this but honestly it's not too bad at all I thought it was gonna look way heavier than this it truly just gives a flawless base this would be perfect for like really glam makeup days but anyway I'm gonna quickly get off camera and do the rest of my makeup and I will be right back Okay, so really quickly, I did like the bare minimum to my face. I really wanted this video to be focused around the foundation. So I just added my bronzer. I went in with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. And then I used a blush from ColourPop. Then I went in with my Amrezy highlight from Anastasia. And on my lips, I have Pat McGrath Done Undone with my Moonchild lip gloss. And I'm wearing the Roller Lash Mascara from Benefit. And honestly, when I was applying my makeup, I was just so pleasantly surprised. Everything was applying so smoothly. It was just like gliding on. It's pretty amazing. I also noticed that my smile lines haven't been dented at all. Just a little bit on this side. This is like my bad side. You can see the line is starting to form there a little bit but I've had my makeup on for over an hour already and that's looking pretty good I know I added some filler to my smile lines like five six five months ago but I did so little that it was almost not worth it like, like it was barely noticeable so foundation still sinks into my lines and this one is looking pretty good it also feels really nice not tacky at all it just in person looks so smooth and perfect like that's the only way I can describe my base right now is like flawless. The only thing I didn't like was the way my highlight applied, but that is just the case for me when it comes to matte foundations. I'm so used to wearing really dewy makeup that whenever I apply a highlight on a matte foundation, it kind of throws me off a little bit. It looks a little bit more textured and it doesn't look as natural and as wet and as one with the skin as it normally would on a dewy base. You know like when you apply a highlight to a dewy foundation, it just melts with it. That is not the case with this. I mean, it looks fine. My face looks highlighted, but if you look up close, this looks pretty textured. So I don't like the way that my highlight looks, but I also feel like I could fix that with my setting spray. I'm pretty sure if I apply this to my face, everything will just melt in really nicely and it'll be fine, but I am not using a setting spray for today's video just because I want to see what this foundation does on its own. I might apply some setting spray like at the end of this video. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, I would say that's the only thing I noticed that I didn't like. That and I'm not crazy about how it looks around my nose, but it's not too bad. Like that's just me being extra picky. Actually, it looks fine around my nose. It looks fine. But anyway, I'm gonna leave my makeup on. It's past one o'clock already. And as you probably guessed, I'm not doing much today. I do wanna plant um, some plants outside. <laughs> I know it sounds really random, but I bought milkweed that's supposed to like attract butterflies. It's like a plant. 
and I really like butterflies. So I'll be doing that today. I'm just gonna be home today. But we are gonna see how this foundation wears and what it looks like at the end of the night. So I will be checking back in in a couple hours. Hello. Hi, here for an update. So I had my makeup on for about three hours now and I just wanted to pop on here to tell you a couple things that I noticed because I completely forgot to take a flash photo with you guys here on camera. So I took a picture of myself like I always do so we can test if there is flashback in photography. So I did take a picture right after I had lunch and I will insert them here. I took two pictures actually. And while this foundation has absolutely no flashback, like I'm looking at this photo, my face looks the same as my neck. The only thing I did notice in pictures is that my foundation looks a little bit heavy like if you zoom in and you see it up close the area around my mouth and like on my cheek it just looks a little heavy and you can tell that I'm wearing foundation so that's the only thing I noticed in photos but besides that it looks pretty good I just like I said earlier I'm not used to wearing foundations that are this full coverage so it's not my favorite in photos but I'm glad that there's no flashback and you can take pictures with it and it's fine another thing I'm noticing um, like I said it's been like three hours and it's starting to fade a little bit on my chin like I'm seeing my chin breakouts come through now before they were completely covered and now the redness is peeking through But that's definitely because I touch my face a lot. That's one thing I don't know if I mention that often in these videos, but I'm constantly touching my face My dogs are constantly licking my chin So so that could have been Cornelius for sure. So obviously keep that in mind. I, I touch my face a lot. And I am noticing that my smile lines look pretty good. I mean, they're there. You can see them. But they're not as bad as they would normally be by this time for sure. They look pretty decent. And I haven't even been tapping them in, which usually I'm like this all day. But I haven't done that at all. So pretty impressed around the mouth in terms of smile lines. I have like such an urge to put this all over my face, but I won't. I won't. But anyway, guys, that's all I have to say for right now. That was my little mini update. I will check back in with you guys later. <laughs> Hello, folks. It is currently 11.43 p.m. I think I finished my makeup around 12 or 1. No, 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 it was definitely like 1. Jesus, Porter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I started my makeup around 12. Anyway, point is I've had my makeup on for over 10 hours. I would say around 11. And this is what my makeup looks like now. I will say that no matter what foundation I put on, if I'm wearing my Smashbox primer underneath, I will look dewy at the end of the day. That's why I have a little bit of a shine coming through, like a, a little bit of a glow. And honestly, that's the primer. I'm curious to see what this would look like at the end of the day with one of my other primers. It's just every time I'm gonna go for something matte, I always use a primer like this because if not, it would have been a hot, cakey mess, which leads me to the conclusion that I think I like this. I mean, it has completely disappeared on my nose and on my chin, like completely after about six hours, I was really noticing it fade on my nose. But again, like I told you guys earlier, my dogs lick my face all day, my chin, my nose, like pretty sure they ate somebody else today. So I can't even get mad at that. Uh, my pimple is still covered. I thought by now, I mean, it's been 10 hours. I thought that was gonna be bright and just really shining through but it has remained pretty covered i'm also still pretty impressed with my smile lines even though they do look a little bit dry like the area around my nose is looking a little dry i think it looks pretty good for being a matte foundation i mean this stuff is full coverage i thought my face was gonna be a lot cakier than this i've got to be honest i think i really like it my face looks dewy but it's not tacky at all is it my favorite foundation in the world no i have several foundations i like more just because i like a light to me medium coverage. I like a dewy glow. I like a more sheer foundation. That's just my preference. For something that's matte and full coverage, this doesn't look horrible on my dry skin. I actually am pretty impressed. I'm gonna continue to use this. I'm gonna use it with several different primers, different concealers. I'm gonna add setting spray right now, actually. I'm gonna try to use it in several different ways to see if I still like it overall. So be sure to follow me on Instagram because I will be updating you guys on this bad boy in the near future. Oh no! I was supposed to zoom in and show you guys my face before the setting spray and I haven't done the zoom in yet. Right. Well, whatever. Now you can see it up close with a setting spray on. Wow, let me tell you though. Adding that setting spray completely fixed 
this dry issue I had around my nose, like completely. I look a little bit dewier and a little bit healthier now, but I feel like my bronzer, blush, and highlighter is still there. I mean, I didn't apply a lot to begin with. Listen, it's been like 11 hours. This is not bad at all. Okay guys, well that completes this video. This was my review on the brand new I Am Magic foundation from Juvia's Place. I would say for the price and for what it is, I think it's pretty good. I know that my first impressions kind of always end like this, like, <laughs> but I actually thought I was gonna hate this. I thought this was gonna be a bad review. I thought it was gonna say like fail on the thumbnail or something because I really pictured this like super matte, super dry. I didn't pick up the concealer because I honestly didn't even think about it. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to try out the concealer and I will update you guys. Or did you guys pick up the concealer? Do you have it? Let me know how you feel about the concealer in the comments below because I don't wanna buy it if I don't need to buy it. So I wanna know what you feel about it first. Anyway guys, that completes this video. Let me know if there's another foundation out there that you want me to do a review or a first impressions on. I love you guys so, so, so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye. I got so, well, oh, that's another matter. Why are men great till they gotta be great? Ah! It's okay, I'm ready in my DM. It's fine, it's fine. <gasps> Except I got coffee, everyone!